much. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you again. Yes, you too. Yeah. It's been too long. It's been an Oscar <laughs> yeah. and two movies. Yeah. <laughs> too long. Well, my first question is, obviously, why you choose? For me, it's a movie about more. Mm. Yeah. Why choosing that subject and make it all happen? Well, that, that to me was actually, it, it was, the thing that made me want to do the movie was when I learned that um, Neil uh, lost his daughter right before becoming an astronaut, just uh, less than eight years before walking on the moon. I think uh, at first when I was asked, do you want to do a movie about Neil Armstrong, I, I, I said no, because I, I thought I knew the story um, and that there wasn't anything left to discover there. Um, but when it suddenly occurred to me that this was a man uh, taking these first steps uh, who was in grief, a man who was in mourning, a man who was trying to cope with the unfathomable, suddenly the physical journey to the moon felt like it had an emotional journey built underneath it. And I just became fascinated with who that person was, what he was going through at that time, and by extension what his family was going through, what his wife was going through. Um, and so to look at the movie as not a space mission movie really, but a movie about a family and a marriage and about this home uh, life that informed what happened in space, uh, that fascinated me, felt like an untold story. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, I think that sort of got us both going. Yeah, we, we, were, we were both, uh, you know, when Damien came to me, uh, I, I was, uh, I, I saw Whiplash and was a huge fan and was very excited to to get to work and um, and was more excited as I read about Neil and realized not only had he lost a daughter shortly before uh, during the, the Gemini program, but that he lost two of his closest colleagues in the Gemini program all within a 12 month period. Mm -hmm. And in that same 12 month period, he almost died as well. And it became very clear that this was a, a, a movie about a triumph that was really about loss. You know, there's a wonderful quote by Samuel Beckett uh, who was writing to a friend upon the, the friend's loss of a father that sort of wondered how is it that we are able to move on with these wounds that we bear that never go away. Uh, and I think that um, anyone who's lost someone dear to them, it never goes away. And, and it is sort of remarkable that we're able to continue moving forward. Um, and I, I think the worst thing I could ever imagine is the loss of a child. Uh, and so uh, we just thought, you know, there is a, there's a really remarkable story here um, that we really wanted to tell. As a director, why you choose to make it, even the poster, all in extreme close-ups? I think it was, it was uh, in many ways an attempt to do the opposite of what history had given us, what the sort of official version of events was. Today, I think we have this sort of distance of almost 50 years from the lunar landing, and so you can almost forget that these people were human beings, that they were ordinary human beings who, you know, in between flying to space had to take out the trash and clean the pool and, and take care of kids and, and, uh, and went through also universal family troubles, uh, uh, both joys and problems. And, and uh, it felt to us, I think, that if the movie could really adopt a sort of up close and personal, intimate style, it would um, hopefully counterintuitively maybe make the film feel more universal, wind up making uh, what they do feel even more epic because you understand them as flesh and blood human beings who, who hurt, who suffer, who have doubts, who have uncertainties, um, but who persevere all the same. Boss Aldrich, it's a great character. You have. I don't know, maybe one or two blinks for a character. Why, why that character is no more involved on the film, on, on the script and on the film? That relationship, that character is great villain or it's not, an, it's not a, another kind of hero, I guess, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, Buzz's story is a different story. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, uh, you know, I mean, there were any number of things that we, there were a couple things that we wrote that didn't make the, the, the film. Uh, there's a very famous uh, uh, simulation moment where they're both, you know, where they're simulating landing on the moon and Neil crashes and they have an argument afterwards and we wrote that scene and it just didn't quite fit. Uh, there's a great scene we shot uh, right when they, uh, are, they're trying to get off the moon. Uh, the breaker uh, that uh, arms the ascent engine broke uh, and Buzz actually figured out how to fi fix it. Um, we shot that scene didn't make the film. Uh, I think we were, we were very much um, focused on Neil. Mm -hmm. 
and this particular story, this very personal story, um, this you know a lot of what Buzz you know has done before uh, has done has been chronicled, uh, whether in books or in in other uh, representations, and we felt like getting underneath Neil that was our real uh, goal and challenge, and so Buzz is certainly a wonderful character and a very valuable one. Uh, he's a truth teller. Uh, you know, sometimes more than we want him to be, um, uh, although he is always speaking the truth in our movie. Um, but, you know, he just wasn't, that wasn't where we wanted to focus. It wasn't the, the story we were, I think, looking to tell, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think it was very much, you know, uh, uh, everything had to be at service of getting under the skin of Neil and of Janet. And so, um, so Buzz, I think, in the movie is effective insofar as he helps as, as a counter helps get under the skin of Neil. Okay. Steven Spielberg, you worked with him in the post, obviously. How do you want to work with Steven Spielberg as a producer for this kind of story? You know, what's wonderful about Steven is that, uh, you know, uh, someone asked us earlier, you know, uh, comparing Steven and Damien, there's actually more similarities than differences, which is what's really <laughs> extraordinary. Uh, they're both incredibly hardworking. Uh, you know, and uh, it sort of goes to the theme of genius is not born, it is made. Uh, you know, and, and it takes my breath away watching the two of them work because they both work with such great, great effort, uh, despite how talented they both are. You know, uh, it's, it's not, doesn't, doesn't begin and end with the talent. It, there's a ton of work behind that talent. Um, and so it was really, frankly, enjoyable to watch the two of them working. And, 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 I mean, you can speak more to this, I, you know, Stephen is, is the best cheerleader and the best support to have. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it's, it's funny, he hired me to write the post off of the script for this. Mm -hmm. uh, people thought it was off the script for Spotlight, but it wasn't. I mean, it probably didn't, ha didn't hurt, but, uh, but he hired me off the script for this. So, uh, you know, he, I think he always really appreciated this film and, and what it could be and, and has been just a terrific cheerleader, you know, uh, along the way. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 an it's an honor to have someone like him as a cheerleader. Thank you very much. Thank you.